Amen. That's the power of God. <clears throat> Before we move on, we can't do anything by our own. We have to depend on God. That's why let's start by prayer. My Father who is in heaven, our Father who loves us all, we thank you for this time. We thank you because you love us. We thank you because you lead us beforehand that we can't do anything by our own. We have to depend on you. The time is come. The time is here. We depend on you. Not by myself, as the congregation. We surrender to you. Use us all for your glory. We come and we humble ourselves. Use us so that when, by the time you come, everyone will be ready to meet you in the sky. In Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, let's go back to Judges. But let's go to Judges 13. By the way, I would like to ask you something. Who's working and you like to get money for free? I know it's only one. And everyone needs to work. But sometimes when you come to church, we need to participate. Amen. We need to participate. That's why I ask everybody to, to come to read. When it's time to come to read, I ask everyone. We come to work. In the church, we need to work as we work in, for other people. Amen. Let's move on. Judges 13. We start with, with verse 2 to 5. Volunteer to read. Yeah, go ahead. Now there was a certain man from Zoar of the family of Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and had no children. And the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Indeed, now you are barren and have borne no children, but you shall continue. Thank you. In these verses, we find out the angel of the Lord come to this lady. He, she didn't have any children. But the time come when the angel come to her and tell her, you're going to have a child. The child has a specific mission. The child comes for a specific mission as God appointed to this earth to have specific mission. Do you agree you have specific mission to, for God? As you have specific mission, is Samson was raised according, the parent raised him according to God's mission or not? Yes. yes. Uh, sometimes in our lives, we, um, our parents raise us in good way, give us good, good instruction, give, give us good tool to be able to success in our life. But it's up to us when we, have the right, we get the age to decide, make our own decision to, de to go to the other way or follow the, our parent, parent decision. Is that, am I right? So. Samson's parent raised him according to God's way 
but it's up to Samson to decide which way I have to go, which way I have to obey. By the way, there's some criteria. The angel of the Lord told the lady that she had to follow by the time she got pregnant and to the time Samson would be able to, to make his own decision. He, has, he should not have Samson himself and the parent. He should not have to drink any wine. He should not have to eat an unclean food. And he not, Samson himself not be shaved. That's the condition. Then, let's, see the, let's define Nazarite. What does Nazarite mean? The Nazarite mean somebody who was separate, who chosen by God. Somebody who was chosen, put apart, set apart by God. Then, he, that, Samson was put apart for specific mission so that he started to deliver people from Israel because people from Israel was under pressure of Philistine. He, he, Samson has a mission to do, but let's see if he did. So, what made him to be a Nazarite? To be able to be called the Nazarite, he should not have to drink a wine, he should not have to eat unclean food, he should not have to be shaved. Amen. Then, let's see the relationship between Jesus and the Samson. Samson was appointed to deliver the children of Israel from the first time. And Jesus came to deliver everyone, everyone from the sin. Let's see if either one of two accomplished this, the mission they were according to. Samson, when he was walking by God, there's a time when he decided, to, when he was about to make his own decision, he failed to obey God's law. But Jesus, because he was going by God's law, obey God's laws, even he obey his father, he accomplished his mission. And let's move on to Judges 16. We start with verse 16 to 22. Somebody to read, please. Need to work for God. Uh, 16 to 22. Amen. In this passage, 
there are a lot to learn from this passage. First of all, we realize that Delilah was pressing him. Give us the truth why you have so much strength. And Simpson cannot be able to defend his, himself. He decided, okay, let me tell you the story. That sometimes we expose to the danger, uh, but the, we're not able to defend our own spiritual battle. We try to say, oh, you know, by the way, this is the, the reason I have, I have said such and such to God. Then, how Delilah, the lady, know that Samson told, told him about, her about his, his lie, he, that he told him her about the truth? How did she find out? Is anyone having an, an idea? How do you know that Delilah knows that Samson just said the truth of his heart? The reason he said that, because he said, I'm Nazarite. That he saw his identity. Sometimes we saw our identity. Let's, let's give an example. If some stranger asks you to give his social security, ask you to give his social security number, can you do it? No. no. That's the same way. Sometimes we saw our identity to a stranger we don't know how can we defend our own for saying our identity a spiritual identity to somebody who didn't know Samson himself he sold his identity the identity is not his name Samson the identity for him was to be called a Nazarite that's where his, his strength came from because the, to be called a Nazarite, you have to be separate from everything you do to be called child, chosen God. So that's why by the time Samson, he was un unable to bear to defend himself, he said, okay, I'm Nazarite. I will never be shamed. And also he, gi he gave her the solution when he will be weak like other people. By the way, do you like to be other, like other people or do you be like special? As a Christian, you, be, you like to be special to God or you like to be like other people? The choice. I know everyone will say, I like to be special to God. Amen. You need to be special to God because God has given you a specific mission to accomplish for him. But if you like to be like other people, you will not be able to accomplish his mission. Then, but in, in 1 Peter verse 2, uh, chapter 2, verse 9, it says, First Peter two nine. Can somebody read? Oh, you want me to read? Yeah, read it. Yeah, read it. Yeah, read it. Yeah, read it. Yeah, read We are chosen people. Amen? We are chosen people. We, we are not like others. But Samson himself was a special person. But he decided to be like others. How the other act? I'll be like, I, I, I act like other people where they like. Well, the, I don't mind to have my strength. I don't like, be like to, to be called a Nazarite. I would like to sell my identity 
of Christianity or to be called by, chosen by God. I would like to be like other people, where they act, what they do, I would like to do the same as they do. As a Christian, let's see how we can interact with other people. We, we don't like to be like others. We like to be special to God. When by the time Jesus comes, we'll be able to meet him by, because we'll be called as special people to him. Amen? We need to be called as special people. So, the liar tries to push to know what, what is your mission. He, she tried to push her. Where did your strength come from? Sometimes, uh, uh, when we say our, our, our spiritual identity, we don't know which, how the, uh, the, somebody who had, the, the, who had our identity were used for. It's the same as if you give your social security number to somebody. It's up to the person who has your social security number to use for good or to use to harm you. Am I right? That's the same delight. When Samson gave his own identity, sold his own identity to be called a Nazarite, the reason he be called a Nazarite, that it's up to the liar to decide, okay, I use the information I give you to protect you or to harm you. That's what that same happened. The same thing happened. By the time he, had, he told that all his heart, he knows, oh, the, the what I was looking for from Samson, I just get it. Let's call the people. Let's call my people. Let's call my reader. By the way, by the time Samson told Delilah about his heart. He was hoping that everything would be fine. He was hoping, oh, since I told her all my secret, why I'm so strong, she'll be able to love me so much. That's why sometimes we try to, to store our, in, our identity for hoping something will be good to us. But when you never know by the time you saw your spiritual identity, how you be connected to God. It's up to somebody to decide, okay, by what you just told me, I used to destroy you. Sometimes in our relationship, our, our, our marriage, sometimes we, we tell somebody, you know, the reason my marriage is so strong is such and such, such and such. I do this, I do this, I do this. It's that the way you are expecting the feedback, sometimes the feedback came in negative way instead of coming in a positive way. Instead of showing the way you can encourage to make your, your marriage better, somebody may try to give you, oh, no, you know what? Because your marriage is this way, I want to destroy your marriage. Instead of give you the tool to, to build your relationship, he gives you the tool to destroy the relationship. Am I right? This, I mean, the way sometimes we share our information, our spiritual, who do we share? What time we need to share? Why we share? That's the three questions we need to ask ourselves. Is that going to be beneficial? Or will be the other way. Uh, I asked uh, last time when I was in Sabbath school, Mike uh, shared some, something on, well, he, he put something on Facebook. He was posting some, something which is spiritual. But the response he got back, I asked him, by the time I, I would like to share this testimony, he said, okay, use it. The, the feedback he got eh, was not good. Even though he, 
he posts something on Facebook which was spiritual. Sometimes we, there's a time we share something by expecting that something will come as good, but a time has come somebody. Harm yourself. Amen? The same thing happened to Samson. He was hoping something would be fine. The lie would be, oh, beautiful, ready to her. But when he saw his identity, how he's connected to God, where his strength came from, that the time the lie decided, okay, I'm, I'm good. What I was looking for, I just got it. It's up to me to use it. It's up to me to destroy you now. So, that's why as a Christian, we need to see where and how to share our information. And also, Samson had, Samson, he showed his, he like, said, I would be like other people. Did he know exactly to be like other people would be? Answer no. Because if we know that to be like other people for him would be lose his eyes, he will not be able to do it. He will be able to do it? I know we're not. The same thing. If you sin, you never, you never know how the sin will be harmed, will be come to you. It can't, some, it can't Directed to harm you, to destroy your relationship with God. That's why we need to know how do we share the information? What time? But Samson himself, he has set up a wrong mind. Wrong mind setting. He had he, on his mind. He had he, that anything we're not able to separate from him from God. No matter if he make a sin, he'll be able to, to be able to stand to, this, to have his own identity as Nazarite. Then, when the Philistine come, his enemy come, his, his mind was, oh, no. I'll be fine. I just try a couple of times. I try this and try this. Be both was success. And this, this time will be the same. Sometimes if we sin, we make a sin. We find a sin. We don't have time to repent ourselves. We don't know by the sin, the sin we separate from us from God. But we still have this wrong mind. I'm still a Christian. Even that, see, I do this, and I do this, and do this. I'm Christian. Who removed me? I've been a seven day Adventist from my birth until now. I, I have, I do this, to this, and this to the community. I, I'm Christian. I, I'm, I have the best relationship with God. But, you know, you sin. Simpson. He knows his sin. He knew his sin. But, but his wrong mind setting. I know. I've tried a couple of times. Wrong experience. Amen? We have, sometimes we have a wrong experience. But, but God still loves us. Amen? God still loves us. Uh, if you look Jeremiah... 7 verse 8 to, to 11 we see the same thing Jeremiah 7 8 to 11 somebody read for me ok go ahead No, no. Hey, seven. Behold. 
Behold, you trust in lying, in lying word that can be, not be prophets. The mind still saying, Oh, you know what? You can do this and still be loyal to God. He said, Will you still murder, commit adultery, swear, and the work? swears firstly burn incense to bar and the work after other God who you may you didn't know and when you come and come standing before me say I'm saved I'm fine where's the deal the mind the mind keep telling me or the mind keep telling you you safe even though you make a sin. Instead of running to God. Do you think if Samson before be shaved, he says, Oh God, oh God, I say something I should not be able to say. Do you think that we have any you have a change? Yes. Because the power of God, the blood of Calvary. Is there any time you ask? Is there any time? But Samson failed to realize, oh, you know what? What I just said is fine. I, that, I have done this and have done this, I'll be fine. But he didn't know that the power of God is not go with the sin. God loves us. But he does have an interest in sin. He likes to save us from the sin. But sometimes our wrong mind keeps saying, you know what? I've done this. I'm still, but I'm still Christian. I kill somebody, I'm still Christian. Instead of coming, oh, you know what? I have something, I kill somebody. Oh, I lie to somebody. I'll do this. Let's run to God. And ask for forgiveness. The power of God, right then, by the time we ask, He'll be able to cleanse us for our own, uh, for His everything we done. That's the power of God we have. This is the power we claim. The power, the power of Calvary, the power who saves us from the sin. But if you keep by, by our own mind, that we'll be able to. See Stay with God while we keep sinning, we're not able to stand by the time Jesus comes. Let's move on. I like this verse. Revelation 3:17. I like this verse. I like this verse. Revelation 3:17. Oh, I like this verse. Three seventeen. Three seventeen. Go ahead, Steve. Three, three.
You see how everyone has the mind, the, our mind is now God's mind. These people from Laodicea, they think they are rich. They think they have everything they need. But God sees them as a neck people. That's, that's how sometimes God sees us. As we claim as righteousness, instead, God says, you are not right. You need to repent. Our mind has been sent the wrong way. Instead of coming to Jesus, we based on from our feeling, or we based from somebody's faith, or we based from past experience, that, oh no, I have done, I have such experience. I'm comparing myself to someone else. That's why we fail. Because Jesus, in this passage, people would, say, say, would think themselves, what they see as themselves, what they see as righteousness. But God sees them as a naked people, weak, and they don't have anything to sustain, to be able to stand on God's day. But they, their mind still say, I know why, we're fine. We're fine. Why do we need to repent? Why do I need to do this? That's why most, most of the time, we fail to repent. Because we don't realize our own needs. We don't realize that we need to be repent, to be able to stand, to be able to be close to God, to loyal to Him. We fail to repent. Mind, feeling, past experience, block us to be able to, to have the best communication with God. God, forgive us today. May God forgive us. Because our mind st still lies to us. Instead of being connected to God, instead of being have the best relationship to God, my mind, I'm, I'm my mind, and your mind, everyone's mind, lies. Lie. Because the devil knows which is right. He knows as long as your mind is be connected to the world, as long as your mind is be connected to the past experience, or your mind be connected to somebody's faith, you'll be fine. But you'll not be fine because your mind should not be connected to someone else. It should be connected to God and to see yourself as through the word of God. Instead of ourselves to be look through the word of God, to see what is right, what is wrong, we base on past experience. Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, as we move on, <coughs> let's read Jeremiah 17 10. Let's see what it says. Jeremiah 17 10. I like to read somebody from this side. Back, back. Amen. Thank you. And these verses, we find out God examined the mind of everyone. How he, he lie himself or herself? How he control himself? How somebody say himself, I'm right. I'm fine. I don't have anything to repent. I don't have anything which separate me from God. I'm fine. As long as we say we are fine, at the same time, 
we are wrong because the mind keeps telling me, if I, instead of God telling me, my son, my daughter, you're fine. But myself keep telling me, I'm fine. Yourself keep telling me, oh, you don't need to repent. What wrong have you done? Even you, you done that one, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to you, but it doesn't it, it matter to God. Because it's a very, it shows the barrier between you and God. So God examines every one of us. God examines my heart. God examines your heart, what you have done, what you do, what you have done in the past. See, see yourself. It's time to repent for everyone. It's time to, to bow down, to ask God to forgive us for the past experience we have been, for the past experience we based on. We need to, to come out. Come out from the past experience. Pa come out from the wrong mind we have been in. Because our mind keeps telling us, was your mind? goes by. It does go, it goes by your feeling or it, got, it goes by the word of God. What you read, is that much by your mind or is against yourself? You keep telling yourself, no, even though I read this, even though it doesn't match, I'm fine. <laughs> That's how our mind Keep telling us, even though this does not match of what I did, I'm fine. Instead of coming, oh Lord, I've done this. I've done this. Forgive me. It's time to ask for forgiveness for everyone of us. Let's keep, let's keep continue. As long as we, not, we do not accept that we are sinner. Even though we come to church, let's see the consequence. And Mark 6, verse 6 to 7. Um, Gospel of Mark 6 to 7. Let's re let me read. He answered and said to them, We, we did well. Did Isaiah the prophet? Of, of prophesy of you hypocrites as he written. These people honor, my, honor me with my lips, but their heart is far from me. And in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrine the commandment of men. This is the consequence. Uh, even though we pray, even though we have... We claim that we have the best connection of God. Our teaching, our prayer become as doctrine of men. Because we don't have it. Before we had to do anything, we had to confess our sin. We need to confess our sin before we move on. Then, if we, we, we are not confess, we not do ask for forgiveness. Even though we pray, it's nothing. See, it's nothing. If, even a time you can spend hours, days praying, praying without asking for forgiveness, is nothing. Because mind, our mind is keep telling you fine. Let's pray. I'm fine. Let's pray. But wherever you pray, is honor God by lips. It's honor God. By lips, instead honor God in the truth and the righteousness. This is the time we need to run to God and ask for forgiveness. Ask God to help us to match our mind by the word of God. Because sometimes our mind, as I said earlier, our mind still have all what the earth will do, people around us do, 
people, every, it, it, the one you see around you, that's what you base on. Mr. Okay, Read, let, let me read the Bible and they see what I think is much with the Bible. Sometimes we, we don't have time have to read the Bible. We don't have time to pray. We don't have time to ask for forgiveness. We move on. The life is good. Let's move on. Let's move on. As I read this, as I'm about to, call, to finish, let's finish with Galatians 5, 22 to 25. Uh, Galatians 5 20, 22 to 25 yeah Galatians 5 22 to 25 My beloved fr friends, brothers and sisters, it's time to see ourselves as a new person. Now see ourselves as people who are rich in righteousness, who are rich in, in everything you can imagine. Be ourselves as a naked people who need to repent, who need to have more forgiveness than what do we think? Does somebody read? Amen. That this is the conclusion. This is the conclusion. Uh, sometimes, if we try to compare ourselves, see if we are in the right path with God. This is how we can best ourselves. See, sometimes we may think I'm fine, but you are hatred. You hate somebody. You say I'm fine. Why you don't want even greet somebody who's next to you? But the mind, as I said earlier, want to keep telling you, yeah, no, you're fine. You don't have to do this. You don't have to do this. But the fruit, we need to have the fruit of spirit. Uh, that's the measure. That's the measure. That's the, the scale we can check ourselves in. If you are right to God or not. Because if we don't have the fruit of spirit, the spirit of God is not in us. We need to repent. As long as, even though we claim ourselves as righteousness, as people from a religious see us think, or see themselves as a righteousness, instead of God see them as a naked people who need to repent, who need to, to run to God, but they, they see themselves as rich people. Is this applied to us? We don't have, sometimes we don't have fruit of spirit. We don't have fruit of spirit. We don't have the best, best connection with others. But we say, oh no, we're fine. We're fine. Because our mind keeps telling us. Devil keep telling us. As the Samson was telling himself, oh no, I'm fine. I will shake myself free. I will shake myself free. I have done in the past. I have done this and done this. This is not a big deal. But he didn't realize. God, the power of God, who, who gave him the strength, who gave him the power to be called the Nazarite, his power was not coming from because he Samson. As Christian, the power is not because your, by your name. The power is 
be from where you be connected to God. Your powers come from the blood, the blood of Jesus, who surround us. But if we reject the power of God by realizing that we need to repent, Pastor always said, we, we are, we, we always, we, we you don't deserve anything. Pastor Kim, Kim always said that. We don't see our needs. But we, compare, we see the needs from others. This is the time to, to see that our needs. It's time to see my needs. It's time to see your needs. But your needs to repent. Your needs and my needs need to be connected to God by matching our mind by the word of God. It's not by the time, it's not your mind, if you not have your best connection to God, by the time Jesus come, no one will be able to stand. Even though we stand, we spend many hours in the church, we give us something to the poor, we do everything we can, but if we don't have time to realize ourselves, as we need to repent. We need to be on our own knees to ask for forgiveness, to, for the power of blood to cleanse us. We'll not be able to stand. Amen. Right. It's the time. Let's claim the power. Let's ask the fruit of spirit to be in us. The power of the, power of the blood. Power of Calvary is there as long as we ask. But sometimes we, are, we don't ask. We don't ask because we think we're fine. We don't ask because we know we don't, there is a need to ask for forgiveness. Oh, God, forgive us. Forgive us because we keep sh making our own needs. We compare ourselves as Samson himself. He saw his identity. Sometimes we saw our identity. And the, we, when we saw our identity, the time to realize that we need to bring our identity back, we don't have that time. It's time to claim for our identity. Our identity is the righteousness of God. Our identity is to claim the fruit of spirit to be in us. This is the time. Let's pray. Let's pray. Oh. My Father who are in heaven, we just thank you for this opportunity to be around you, to hear your word. We can't do anything by our own. We can't even sanctify ourselves. But through your blood of Calvary, we'll be able to stand. Help every one of us to be able to stand. Help everyone to realize his own or her own needs. But the time to repent is now. It's not tomorrow. It's not next year. But the time to repent and to be connected to you is now. We ask you, Jesus, as you pray every day, send your Holy Spirit to be in us. Send your Holy Spirit to teach us that we need to be connected to you. Now, Based on the experience, but based on the word of you who come from your mouth. Oh, Jesus, this is the time when a people goes away based on their own needs. This is the time, Jesus, to call everyone to come to you. Oh, Jesus, my mother. Most precious God, 
who decide to shed the blood on Calvary so that everyone will be ready by the time you come. Oh, bless us, Jesus. We surrender to you. We surrender to you. We can't do anything by our own. We can't even know what kind of needs we have. But through you and through the Spirit, we'll be able to know what we need. Oh, we thank you. We praise you because you love us. We praise you because you realize beforehand we need salvation. We, we claim the power. We ask everything in Jesus' name. Amen.